Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to today's membership onboarding webinar. We're just going to leave it a couple of more minutes to allow for the people that have registered to join. So if you just bear with us for a couple of minutes, we're just going to wait until about two minutes past 10 before we start. Thank you. Hello again, everybody. So welcome to today's membership onboarding webinar. I'm Ruth Mullen, the Head of Membership Awards and Events at the British Safety Council. And today myself and the wider BSE team will be providing you with an overview of the benefits and support you can access as part of your membership package. We will be going into some detail in terms of how you can access these benefits. And we will also provide you with an update of some of the key policy and campaigning initiatives and other services that the BSE can offer during 2022. There will be time for questions at the end, so you can type your questions into the questions bar during the webinar, um, and we'll pick these up at the end of the presentations. In addition to this, we will be recording today's webinar, and we will send it out to you after um, the webinar, should you wish to share this with any of your colleagues after today. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Sheila Lacey, who's our Membership Subscriptions Manager, and she'll be providing you with an overview in terms of how you access your benefits. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Sheila Lacey and I'm the Membership and Subscriptions Manager and I'm going to go through how to access your membership benefits and what benefits you get as part of your membership. Next slide please. When you become a member of the British Safety Council you receive an automated email with a link to set up your online account. Once you, what you do is you click on the link set up your password and then you'll be able to log into your online account. Next slide please. To log into the account, your account, what you do is you click on the little man symbol which is in the top right of the top ribbon and then what you'll see is there's a drop down menu. Under the tab your membership this is where all your benefits are listed for you. Next slide please. As you can see, it will show an array of benefits that you have access to. All you need to do is to click into the individual box and then you'll be able to access that particular benefit. Next slide, please. When you become a member of the British Safety Council, you receive a electronic certificate which can be used to demonstrate your commitment. There's also various different types of logos that you can download from your online account. And you can use these on your business cards, tender documents, on your website, any marketing materials. And we've even had someone who puts them on the vans and we've had also on a high-vis jacket. So there is different 
ways you can show your commitment to the Bridge of Safety Council. If you've got any queries or questions, there is also a guidelines on how to actually download the logo and how to use it and where to use it as well. Next slide, please. As part of the membership, you actually receive 100 training licenses. These are e-learning courses, they're introduction courses, and you claim them through your online account. You just buy each um, particular course name, you just pop in the number of licenses you would like, and then they will be added to your online account for you. So as my colleague is going to go through more to do with the e-learning courses later, Next slide, please. We actually produce a monthly safety management magazine. This is an electronic magazine that you can download off your um, online account anytime during the month. There is an archive on there. You're able to download it. You're also able to share it with your colleagues so they have a chance to read all the up-to-date relevant profiles, features, and also opinions for readers from all across the board. The actual, what you'll receive is at the beginning of the month is an email just to confirm that the actual new safety management magazine is available. There's a link where you can just click on it straight away. So you'll be able to share it that way. We've also introduced an app, which is a kind of an extension of the magazine, but it has daily news and features for you. This can be downloaded from the App Store or Google Play. So please go and download it and have a look. Next slide, please. We've also recently introduced Corona Eye Safety Inform Lite, and this is automatically added to your online account for you. And what it has is each week on a Thursday, you'll receive an e-alert, and this gives you up-to-date information that's happening during the week. So you can keep up to date and you can forward to your colleagues. Also, there's an online portal where you log in through your online account. And on there, there's what's new, there's daily features on there, there's Q and A's on there. So there may be a burning question that you need an answer to, you'll be able to find it there for you. There's topics and quick facts for you and summaries on lots of different information to do with health, safety, environmental, and also parts of well-being as well. There's also toolkits, which are very practical and step-by-step -step guides. So what you can do is you click into there and it gives you various information. And always when you have various information, what you can do is also you can add it to a folder so you can keep it for later. You're able to email them to your colleagues as well. So you can share the wealth of information that you receive from this portal to your colleagues so they can keep up to date and you can make sure they know what's happening in the world as well. You also can become a part of a sector interest group. We've got various different groups that gives you a chance to get together, discuss issues and share your views and just find out what's happening with um, companies around the world that have the same, that are in the same industry as you and you may be able to network and things like that. My colleague Ruth will go through more about how you can become part of the sector interest groups. Next slide, please. We also have two separate modules as part of the membership. There's a tools and templ templates module. And what this is, is monthly feed posters and A5 guides, which are associated with the safety management magazine. So what topics are happening in the magazine will be a key topic and the guide and the poster will also be associated to that as well. You can actually access these posters and guides through your online account at any point. There's also an archive of last year's posters and the year before posters and guides. So what you can you do is download them and you can use them for anything from introductions. A lot of people use the A5 guides as introductions to different topics, covering anything from fire safety, manual handling, to also there's waste management. So there's lots of different topics. They're covered each different topic each month. So please look out for them as well. We also have um, risk assessment templates as part of this module, which you can download and use in your company as well. 
there's also you can add your own logo on there as well so you can kind of personalize it to your company there's also employee guides that have been added recently which will keep you up to speed and make sure you're following best practice and your your responsibilities in following areas you're covering them from what we've added is to do with mental health well-being managing stress financial well-being and occupational health so please log into your account and what you'll be able to do is click on the tools and templates box and what you'll see is there's all the guides and posters and also the employee guides available for you there so please check it out next slide please we also have the advice module which gives you up-to-date advice on any queries or concerns you may have we have a 24-hour health and safety and also there is a HR support line as well and what you can do, this is through Corona Right, and what you can do is call them up and ask them any particular question you've got a concern about. They will answer that question for you. And also, if there's any extra guidance or support they can give you, what they'll do is they'll update you with some information via email. So you can look through that at a later date as well. You also, we have an annual legislation and best practice update that you can actually come to and get some updates on what's happening. There will be one in 2022, so please make sure to look out for information and how you can actually sign up. And as part of this, also you get an attendance certificate. So that's the um, benefits of part of the membership. We also have email communication that you should also make sure you look out for. We have your monthly membership newsletter, which will be emailed directly to you. And it gives you up to date information on what's happening, tells you about all the benefits. And it also has information on events that are happening. So you can also register. So please make sure to look out for that. You also, as part of the monthly magazine, you receive an email so you can click on there. So make sure to look out for that. We also have a policy email that has up-to-date information about our policy and campaigning. So please look out for that. My colleague Stephen will go through a bit more information to do with our policy and communications area later. And also, as I said, there's a weekly Corona Eye alert to look out for as well with all up-to-date information and news for you. So please make sure to look out for that as well. Lastly, please make sure that you actually take advantage of all your membership benefits. Please go into your online account, have a look around. If you've got any queries or concerns or you can't log into your account, you've forgotten your password, you can't find your membership certificate, anything like that at all, please make please feel free to get in contact with the membership team on membership at britsafe.org. We're always there ready to help. Thank you. Next on to my colleague, Saz, who's going to go through the e-learning portion of the membership benefit and explain to you a bit more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. So good morning, everyone. My name is Saz. I am the membership development manager. So during this slide or during this presentation, I will give you a rundown of the types of e-learning licenses that you will be entitled to, um, along with how to utilize it and the best way to actually pursue or train your staff really. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, so first of all, as part of your membership, you will receive 100 e-learning licenses with the one year membership. So we give you a choice of 15 courses. Um, out, out of that 15 courses, you get to mix and match the licenses to how you really, how you pursue it within your organization. So for example, um, if you, within the 15 courses itself, um, you can assign as many course as you want um, to your staff. So for example, if you were to assign, say, um, 50 DSC courses um, or 50 um, manual handling courses, um, you have the option to do so um, within the 100 licenses. Um, with the two-year membership, it will be 200 licenses and the free is 300. Every course that you see on the screen right now, um, these are the course itself 
that you will be entitled to, uh, and they vary from general HSC awareness to you know fire warden at work to working at heights. Um, these courses will be on your account, and um, you can easily assign these courses to your staff. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, so as Sheila mentioned, um, how you access these benefits is on the top right hand side, um, you see purchases and subscription. Um, once you click on that, you see something called a learning zone. Um, that learning zone is the e-learning platform itself. Um, if you click on that icon or on the bottom right hand side, that will take you to the main um, main page. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is the main dashboard um, within the learning zone. We designed this to make things as user friendly as possible. Um, on this dashboard, you can easily see the course itself that you have assigned um, along with the dates itself, um, as well as the history. So to give you an example on the top hand side, um, you could see how many licenses that you already claimed and how many um, that are that are remaining. Um, you can also see the history of these e-learning licenses and the course itself. Um, you can always monitor the date of when these courses were assigned. Um, so this way you could keep track of the portal and um, to see you know which one of your employees is you know is still pending with the course itself and when it actually was um, was sent. Um, this way you can easily monitor the types of courses that are remaining on your account. Um, with these courses, they are per user, so you can assign more than one course um, to an employee, but this way you can easily um, keep track of the licenses. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, this is another section of the dashboard. Um, you can always customize to how you want it. So if you want a, if you want to see how many employees completed a certain course, um, you will be able to see that on the dashboard itself. So you can either filter out within the course itself. So if you just search, say, general HSC awareness course, um, you will be able to filter out how many courses were assigned to about the course itself. And on the bottom hand side, you can also filter out a certain um, employee um, in which you can always keep track of the course um, itself. If you go to the next slide, please. Um, so there's two ways that you can assign these courses. On, on the left hand side, you can always do it by uh, employee. So you can always just put the details of that employee that you want the course to be assigned to. Just put their details in, such as the name, email address, or you know contact um, details. They will receive a link to complete the course. Um, but if you want multiple employees to complete a certain course at the same time, once you enroll them, um, you can always assign the course together on the right hand side. All you do is just put the email address down on that system and, and all your employees will receive a certain course. So, for example, if you want a um, 40 manual handling course that you want to assign, um, just put the email address on the right hand side and each one of your employees will receive a link to complete the course um, itself. Or you could do it um, by employee on the left hand side. If you go to the next slide, please. So this is the email that your employees would receive. It's a short, um, simple email. They will receive a link to complete the course. Um, along on that email, they will receive a username and password. So just click on the link, add the username and password, um, and they should receive a guide on how to complete the course itself. If you go to the next slide, please. So to give you an example of how one of our courses looks like, this is a DSC course. Every one of the courses that you see on your screen, they are made in-house by the British Safety Council. Um, they take roughly 20 to 25 minutes to complete, and every one of your employees that completes these courses will receive a certificate upon completion. So on this course in particular, um, it will give you a quick introduction video um, as long as well as the step-by-step -step guides on completing the course itself. Um, you cannot fail and um, we encourage every employee to pass and the main purpose of these courses is to really educate your employees. If you go to the next slide please. 
Um, the second, this course is the general HSC awareness course. Um, as you can see from the screen itself, it will give you a brief overview of the course. Um, this one in particular will take 30, 30 minutes, um, along with the step-by-step -step guides on how to complete the course. It will give you a summary, a minute assessment, and once again, um, you cannot fail. Um, we encourage every employee to pass, and if there's a question that's you know, incomplete, um, you will have the option to redo that um, course itself. Um, that's all from me. I will pass you over to Ruth, who's going to talk to you more about the awards and the event. Thank you. Thanks very much, Saz. Hello again, all. So I'm going to provide you with the whistle-stop tour of some of the key professional recognition opportunities we can offer you and your colleagues as BSC members. Next slide, please. So as you may already be aware, we run two annual awards programs. The first are our International Safety Awards, which recognise organisations that have demonstrated exceptional commitment to occupational health, safety and well-being. Our International Awards scheme launches in September each year, and the deadline is for submissions is the following February. The so organisations apply using experiences from their previous year, and it's one application per site. So for example, the 2022 submissions will be highlighting achievements from January to December 2021. So all members receive a discount on our International Safety Awards and they're also welcome to apply for our additional awards as well. So as well as being globally recognized, our International Safety Awards are extremely inclusive, um, and they include a range of auto and also free to enter awards to acknowledge businesses who have achieved exemplary standards. Our auto entry awards include best in sector, best in country, best in company, and also our chief adjudicators award, which honors our highest score in application. Our free to enter awards include a range of uh, different awards, including team of the year, the health and safety and wellbeing ambassador, we have a CEO award, and also a Health and Safety Transformation Award, amongst many others. So the results of all of our International Safety Awards and Free to Enter and Auto Entry Awards are announced in March and April each year. So we usually have a, a gala um, awards celebration um, each year, but this has currently been on hold since 2019 due to COVID. But you can see here from some of the feedback from the previous winners, the, the achievement is highly valued. And it's also a fantastic opportunity to highlight team achievements and hard work. So we will be um, returning to delivering gala events from autumn 2022, pending, or pending COVID. And next slide, please. In addition to the ISAs, we also run our Sword and Globe of Honour Awards. The Sword and Globe of Honour schemes are linked to our auditing services, and organisations who achieve a five-star audit are invited to apply. Our Sword and Globe of Honour Awards really celebrate and recognise the cream of the crop. So those organisations that have gone above and beyond in implementing, developing and maintaining ongoing standards of excellence. Our Sword and Globe of Honour schemes launch in June each year and the winners are announced in November, December time. So both of our award schemes are a fantastic opportunity to motivate your team, showcase your success both within your organisation and to others within the industry benchmark yourself against others in your field, win new clients and business opportunities, and demonstrate your commitment to excellent health and safety standards. So each year we also run a range of informative webinars about our International Safety Awards and also the Sword and Globe of Honour Awards. So if you are interested in learning more about these or are in the process of drafting an application and would like some top tips, please do get in touch. Next slide, please. So as Sheila kindly mentioned earlier, another key aspect of your benefits package is access to our specialised sector interest groups. Our sector interest groups are member-led groups that meet throughout the year to discuss topics and challenges relevant to their sector. So currently we have six uh, sector interest groups. We have Estadia, Housing and Local Authority, Construction, Healthcare, Retail and Manufacturing and Distribution uh, sector interest groups. Our six um, sector interest groups are chaired by members and they're a great space to share professional knowledge and lessons learned. For each meeting, we invite a range of external speakers to cover topics of interest. And each group also has their own initiative or projects that they're working towards. 
So the meetings are currently virtual uh, due to COVID and also to support our international members attend also. But we will be returning to face-to-face -face meetings at some point during 2022. Um, also, just to let you all know that we have a more general uh, sector interest group meeting um, for all sectors as well, which we're introducing in 2022. The first of this, these meetings will be running in February 2022, so you will be receiving an invite about this soon. So if this is of interest to you and you feel your colleagues may also benefit from a sector interest group, uh, please do get in touch. Next, I'll hand you over to Akil, who will be providing you with an overview of the role of the British Safety Council Account Manager and talking you through some of the key British Safety Council services on offer. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Akil. I'm one of your account managers at the British Safety Council. Um, you should all have an account manager that's dedicated to you um, once you're members with us. Um, and our role is to be there across the year for you, um, to guide you. Um, if you have queries um, contacting us, we'll be able to kind of resolve them. Um, and anything else that may help in assisting you throughout that course of your membership as well. Um, next slide, please, Ruth. So the British Safety Council, we've been around over 60 years um, and we obviously have, you know, we've we've got a lot of organisation and members that we talk to and liaise with on a regular basis um, to give them guidance and assurance as well. Um, next slide. So as explained, the account managers work with you to ensure you get the support you require. <clears throat> this can be throughout the year. Um, we tend to learn a lot more about your organization and support both long-term and short-term strategic goals. So if you have training requirements, um, if you have any objectives that you want to discuss with us, then please contact us at the British Safety Council um, and we'll be able to assist. If you aren't aware who your account manager is, then let us know and we'll make sure that the person gets in contact with you. And obviously, as an organization, we do provide additional services to support your organization through what I will kind of explain to you in the next few slides. Next slide, please. So at the British Safety Council, we offer comprehensive services in health, safety and environmental management. This is via training. Um, we assist organizations to develop and implement a, um, and maintain effective policies. Um, this can be done through our auditing. Um, and we try and seek solutions which align to company goals, tailoring options where necessary. So if you have any specific requirements, then we would look at those and try and help you and guide you through those as well. Um, and we also strive to innovatively enhance products and services. We constantly update our services and products. Um, as members, you've seen that you've got quite a few e-learning courses that you're able to kind of use. Um, but we also have additional courses that might be of relevance to you. Um, and one of the account managers can surely contact you to kind of go through that and explain that more in detail if need be. Next slide, please. Training and education. Um, as, the, as an organization, we have three methods of training, face-to-face, -face, which can be done in-house at your premises um, or at one of our public venues. We will be holding public venues from February next year um, in various regions across the UK. The main courses that we tend to hold, the most popular ones, are IOSH Managing Safely, NIBOSH, AIMA, um, and the Directors Training, which is mainly for your health and safety directors or senior managers. Um, with COVID, we moved on to live online learning because a lot of organizations felt that you know travel was something that they didn't want to um, engage their employees in going to. So we have got all these courses lined up on live online and digital as well, which is via e-learning. So if you have all employees that require training, but they don't have the time to take out from work, then they can look at the option of digital learning as well, where they can do this in their own time. Um, so courses are delivered in a way that suits you. They're interactive, student-centered learning, um, and packages and programs can also be created if you require any specific courses or the organization is looking at. Next slide, please. As mentioned, these are some of our popular training courses. Um, these courses are tailored for your organization from top to the very bottom. So for directors, we have got a health and safety directors one day course. 
um, for managers, there's an IOSH managing safety course. Um, for your health and safety representatives, we've got NEBOSH courses. Um, and we've also got IEMA foundation certificate for your environmental team, um, along with mental health and well-being courses, which is something that we've brought on. And I feel that it'll be quite relevant to organizations, especially for a lot of us, I guess, account managers, we speak to people about these courses um, and mental health and well-being seem to be at the top of the agenda. Um, we also do BSC certified courses, so risk assessment one day courses. Um, and if you have any queries about training, then do contact us and we can go through a more, more, lot more detail of those as well. Next slide, please. We also offer audit and consultancy to organizations besides training. Um, we have a range of audit and consultancy services to help support the organization. I know Ruth has mentioned some of those in the award sections about the Sword of Honor and Globe of Honor. We have a dedicated and experienced technical team to help support and advise you. Um, you audits provide invaluable external validation and assurance and experienced auditors working all over the world focused on best practice techniques. The next slide, I'll talk to you a little bit more in detail of the various sorts of audits that we have on board. Next slide, please. So we started with the safety and environmental systems review. These are benchmark advisory audits that we do for organizations in various sectors. Um, if you have got audits that you're currently doing in-house um, and you're looking at external accreditations, then we kind of move on to the ISO 45001 and ISO 14001, which we as an organization do provide. Um, we do gap analysis audits as well. Um, a lot of organizations come to us asking us to help benchmark them. Um, so we do pre-audits, environmental and health and safety and occupational health and safety audits as well. Um, moving on to the five-star audit. This is more an audit for organizations that are looking at best practice to kind of attain an award. Um, there are six best practice indicators on the five-star health and safety audit. They are leadership, stakeholder engagement, risk management, organizational health and safety culture, continual improvement, and well-being. Once you complete an audit with us, we give you a recommendation plan which you can work towards improving where you are. Um, and the way the five-star audit works in order to attain the globe or sort of honor um, is you have to get five stars. They're graded from one to five stars. Organizations generally starting the cycle end up having three stars to four star ratings, but they work towards an improvement plan and continual improvement um, over the years to try and get to that grading at five stars, um, which then gives them the opportunity to apply for these prestigious awards as well. Next slide, please. So if you do want to find out any more information from your account managers in regards to health and safety, then do contact us. So you can find your login for Safety and Formlight on the uh, British Safety Council site under your profile, as you can see, and under payments and subscriptions on your British Safety Council portal. So as you can see, you just click on the link and you'll receive really useful information around the following, which are things like um, hot topics in the industry and safety, really handy toolkits, uh, like the coronavirus toolkit, um, all of our feature articles, um, frequently asked questions and answers. These are questions we receive from health and safety professionals like yourselves that we have answered. And if you're looking for a second opinion, have a look at this and the and and then the answer. So we'll show that to you in just one second. So this is the coronavirus toolkit. If you click on that. That will give you all of the information, collected um, useful feature articles all in one place. Um, so you can have the confidence that you've got all of the information there as part of your light subscription. And then you've also got up here the um, questions and answers that I was talking about before. Um, and this covers any sort of questions that you would have asked already or we would have had questions before so if you're paying for um an auditor 
um, or you are currently using the helplines, um, you know, this could really help with mitigating against some of the cost, but also um, it's always good to see what other people have asked and the type of answers we're going to get. Um, you can then, once you've found what you really want, you can add it to a folder um, uh, for future use. So you can go back to your folder here um, and from that you can then download it into Word, open off as PDF. I mean, a lot of our documents are actually um, downloadable um, and able to put into folders so that you can use those. You also get access to um, the 50% discount for our wider platform. So our wider platform consists of the legal register um, and also um, ISOs, how to get those ISOs. So if you want those, then do that. But for now, the best thing to do is to go to that link that you saw and request a free callback. And um, what we'll do is we'll do an introductory call with you so that you know how to access it. You can set up your e-alerts quite well. Make sure that you're using that correctly and your membership benefits. And then what you can do is you can um, we can have a conversation with you just to see if there's uh, an opportunity uh, to support you further with our wider platform. So that is a service. So if you've got any questions, then just let us know. We've also got that phone number at the top right hand corner there. Thank you very much. Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Cook. Uh, I'm going to give you an introduction now to our policy and communications work. So um, if we could just move on to the next slide. First, just to tell you a bit about myself and my team and what we do. So, uh, as I said, my name is Steve. I'm head of policy and communications at British Safety Council. In my team, there are three others. There's Tom, who's deputy editor of Safety Management magazine, and uh, Belinda, who's a journalist in the UK. Uh, we've got a UK version of the magazine, as well as Orchi, who's our journalist in India, because we also have an Indian version as well. And as I said, we have some publications uh, that we produce, uh, mainly uh, safety management. That's our key publication, our magazine that as Sheila mentioned earlier, goes out monthly uh, and that you can access obviously at any time using your account uh, on the website. And also it's emailed out through our monthly safety management newsletter for members. Um, we also have a policy newsletter as well, uh, as Sheila mentioned, um, and this goes out to members monthly as well. We've got a new look and layout for the newsletter, so have a look out for it and see what you think. It includes updates uh, in the UK and also internationally. Um, and if you've got any feedback or suggestions or ideas, we're always um, always keen to hear. So um, as well, and uh, in my role, um, I lead on two uh, two main campaigns. Um, proactive campaigns that we have it's British Safety Council and we also have some other campaigns that are more reactive if you like or more issues based. Um, the two main campaigns that we run are Keep Thriving and Time to Breathe and I'll, I'll come on to those a uh, little um, uh, shortly just to sort of explain a bit more about what those are um, but there are issues that we comment on or react on or um, put out press releases, if you like, and other things about. And that includes fire safety, uh, particularly following the Grenfell disaster and the fire safety bill, um, and also Brexit in, in terms of uh, the UK and any future legislation that the UK will develop having left the EU. Uh, and then obviously COVID is another key issue that we comment on and have done a lot on over the last couple of years now almost, um, both in our magazine, but also externally as well. If we can move to the next slide, please. So uh, as well as campaigns uh, and our publications, uh, PR and media is another aspect to um, my role. And uh, that is to manage all of our external relations with the media. And that means issuing proactive news releases, announcements and comments, as well as writing articles or opinion pieces for external publications. Uh, recent examples are here on the slides where we've either announced something or, or we've commented. Um, for instance, as we did recently on the Omicron virus, 
Um, and interestingly, um, as part of that, um, actually ITV Wales was, was keen to interview us uh, last week on that. Uh, and we nearly did do the interview, but actually we were trying to look for a Welsh business in our membership that could also speak. We, we did actually identify one, but unfortunately not quite in time um, to do the interview with, with ITV. But that it shows that there is interest not only in us, but also our members um, in terms of what we're talking about and the issues and topics that we cover. So uh, it's another way that your organisation can get involved. But it also means responding to requests by media for interviews and comments that they come to us with, or case studies also, for instance. So there can be opportunities, as I say, either for us or indeed for our members. So if we can move to the next slide. So just to talk to you about Keep Thriving, um, the first of our campaigns that I'll talk about, we launched this campaign this year, actually, and to improve the well-being or help improve the well-being of workers both within and outside of the workplace so that all workers can thrive. And COVID and the pandemic has clearly shined a light on the well-being of UK workers and uh, those overseas, but many people have suffered from increased stress, could be debt or even loneliness. And, and many insure, employers are actually unsure uh, how best to deal with this or manage well-being properly. Um, so this, this matters more than ever. And that's why we launched our campaign uh, and um, we had a well-being roundtable earlier this year. Um, and also a further event is planned in the new year now to take place in the House of Commons with MPs uh, at a reception where we're going to talk to them about um, what we do and what we'd like to to get their support in terms of um, sort of helping and pledging to support the campaign. And we have eight key calls to action as part of Keep Thriving that we're asking organisations to commit to. Uh, and, and just to give you an example of three of these, one is to appoint an executive director responsible for wellbeing um, who can act as a sponsor for driving change. Another is to actively engage employees and staff in determining and working out the best interventions that work for for them and and thirdly a holistic approach really to health safety and well-being focused on training to enable people um, to prevent and avoid poor well-being and on our website if you if you want to check it out we've got a manifesto under keep thriving which sets out these eight calls in detail as well as a positioning paper that shows really why well-being and better well-being matters um, so if we can move to the next slide, and this is uh, the last slide I'm going to show you on time to breathe, which is our campaign calling on employers, policymakers, and regulators to really start taking seriously the risk of ambient air pollution um, to the health of outdoor workers. And air pollution is the largest environmental health risk um, in the UK. It's greater than even obesity and smoking, uh, and leads to up to 40,000 early deaths a year and costs the UK economy um, 20 billion pounds annually. So we launched the campaign a couple of years ago now um, and have since been doing uh, activity, uh, publishing articles uh, and holding uh, um, round tables. And actually recently we, we took um, time to breathe up to Glasgow for the COP26 conference and we built a, a large banner on a, on a, on a key main road in, in Glasgow um, that was there for the conference. We also had a, a photo opportunity and a media call with our chairman, Peter McGettrick, and um, the uh, head of Devolved Nations as well at Asthma UK and British Lung Foundation came. And we, we did achieve media on, on um, the issue and we had an article in Glasgow Live, Glasgow World, STV, and we wrote an article for Politics Home as well. And our content obviously was shared as well on social media and um, and liked and so on. So it's, uh, it was an opportunity for us to remind people what we're calling for, and that is really improving monitoring across the UK so that all regions have the same access, uh, for instance, as London does for emissions data. We want the UK to adopt the World Health Organization limits um, for main pollutants, and also obviously everyone can do their bit uh, to reduce their, their, their pollution footprint um, that might be cycling or, or maybe walking more to reduce emissions. And we have a free app as well called Canary, which workers and employers can download in London, actually, at the moment, and track their own exposure to air pollution and get advice uh, and so on for the best routes to take. 
So that's all from me. And um, thanks ever so much for listening. I'm going to now hand over to my colleague, Joe, who's going to tell you more about our wellbeing training and provision. Thank you. Sorry, Joe, just to let you know, you're actually on mute at the moment. Thanks. Um, thanks, Ruth. Um, sorry about that, everyone. Um, hopefully you can see my screen all fine and dandy. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Jo, I am the support manager here at the British Safety Council for the Being Well Together programme and today I just want to spend a few minutes talking to you about well-being at work. So have a think, what does well-being mean to you and how does it affect your people, your business and perhaps you've thought about how it's affecting your profits and losses. Here at the British Safety Council, we have uh, created our own definition of well-being and it's an individual's ongoing state which enables them to thrive. So my question to you today is, are your people thriving? If you've been in the workplace for any more than three days, um, you'll know that workplace well-being is well and truly a buzzword at the moment. You really can't get very far without coming across it one way or another. And most people that I speak to think that it's perhaps three or four things. So we've got mental health, obviously, very um, fashionable at the moment. We've got diet and nutrition, exercise, and you know perhaps a little bit of sleep. You know, some people think sleep is important as well. Um, as you can see from my background, I have a bed, so obviously I think sleep is important. Um, so with these things in mind and a mix of pressures from being seen to do the right thing to Generation Z and perhaps even at requests from employees, organisations are in fact implementing some measures and perhaps your organisation has them too. So they're implementing mental health first aiders, cycle to work scheme, free fruit in the office. Um, someone, an organization told me yesterday that they have free sweets in the office. Um, they also have a lot of health problems uh, in their organization. Um, they have healthy vending machines, maybe. Some people, some organizations have EAPs, mental health policies, etc. So, I mean, have a quick think, maybe jot them down. What, if any, of these do you have in your organization at the moment? Don't get me wrong, all of these things are great uh, for a day or two or maybe a month if you're lucky um, because what happens on their own is that they don't actually work and I want to just quickly touch upon three reasons why we believe that they don't work on their own. So the first reason is that most people think, as we've already mentioned, that well-being is mental health and physical health. And, and it really is, it is, don't get me wrong. Um, but actually we encourage organizations to look at more than that when it comes to well-being. When we know that over 11 million days are lost at work a year because of stress at work. According to the CIPD, change management matters not least because change is taking place at an accelerating pace and there's evidence that change initi initiatives often fail. The complexities and difficulties of delivering change are well established with failure rates frequently cited as high as 70%. We know that UK workers are some of the least engaged workers in the world and we also know that productivity is on the decline. All the research that has been done throughout the pandemic shows that a lack of social connectedness is damaging people and people's mental well-being. So here's a question for you. If you used to be in the office, are in the office, you know, when you returned home or even, you know, when you switch your screen off, when you switch your computer off for the day, do you ever tell your significant other about how life-changing the cycle to work scheme is or was? Or perhaps you told them actually about a positive or a negative encounter with a friend or colleague. When we spend over 90,000 hours of our lives at work, that yes, that is correct, um, you can see that workplace well-being is a lot more than mental health, food, exercise and sleep. So the reason number one then, the reason why lots of organisations struggle when it comes to well-being at work is because um, they're not addressing, addressing well-being in a holistic way. 
But with these five areas that have been defined by the CIPD, we guide our customers and our supporters in creating a holistic workplace wellbeing strategy. Reason number two is the reason why these interventions don't work is because quite often they are reactive strategies. So organisations often don't know their starting points and they have a real lack of data. So return on investment is hard to measure without data and they have real difficulty in the business backing their decision. So they tend to pick bits like the mental health first aiders, the counselling, you know, loans um, that employees can take out, etc. And the third reason why many organisations are struggling with well-being at work is because many organisations look at well-being from a HR perspective, often forgetting that health, safety and well-being are all totally integrated and cover systems, processes and people and behaviours. Just a rather crude example, if your colleague falls off a ladder and breaks his leg, is it just his leg that's going to be affected by the fall? Absolutely not. You know, of course, this is a health and safety issue, which will affect your colleague's health. But physical health, you know, his leg's going to be hurting. Um, but it's also going to affect his mental health, perhaps his income, his social relationships. You know, the list goes on. So what do we do to help our supporters and customers nationwide to address their workplace well-being once and for all? How do we help organisations to help their employees move from feeling like this to this? Well, we help organisations move from a tertiary intervention stage of being reactive to sickness absence, being seen to do the right thing and having policies for policy's sake to a place of primary intervention where multiple data sets inform your approach, you're getting the right interventions for the right people and the culture is coming from the top down. So the best thing about our wellbeing services is that they're not just a set of interventions that you're gambling on whether they'll work or not. And there's lots of research out there that has shown that managing interventions across health, safety and well-being is far more effective than managing them across health and safety and health and well-being separately. As Dame Carol Black said, you cannot be a safe worker if you're not a healthy worker. So as you've probably gathered, I could talk about workplace well-being and our vast provisions here at the British Safety Council for another few hours, perhaps days, uh, but I know you're busy. Um, so if you do want to know more about how we can help increase your employee engagement and productive productivity and decrease sickness absence, presenteeism and leaveism, then jot um, our number and email address down and do let us know if you'd like a free 30 minute phone consultation. Thanks, everyone. Sorry, we're now handing back over to Ruth. Thanks very much, Jo. Um, so now we have time for questions and answers. So if you do have any burning questions, just type them into the questions bar that you can see on your screen and we'll pick them up now. Um, so there are a couple in here, which I'll, I'll start with the first question from Sharon. Um, if I can invite my colleagues to turn back on their cameras just for this section, because we, we have a range of questions from across the different presentations today. So this first one I'm going to direct to my colleagues, Sheila and Sam. It's specifically to do with e-learning. Um, it's from Sharon, and she says, as an employed manager, I've always valued membership with the British Safety Council. I am now working as a consultant and volunteer with the Canal Trust and looking to possibly take out membership next year. Can e-learning courses be used for clients slash charity employees? You're Hi. on mute. Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, yeah, that's fine. It's fine. You can um, obviously log in and add people as and when you wish. So yes, you can use that for that purpose. Yeah, so I think Sal's went into kind of some detail about that in his presentation, but um, the next question is from Martin and he's asking, will the slides be made available? So yes, Martin, we will send a follow up with our slides and also we'll um, share the recording of the webinar as well if you need to catch up a bit later. So Sharon, hopefully that answers your question as well. And if you need any support in terms of assigning uh, licenses for the e-learning to any of your colleagues, uh, just get in touch with us directly at membership at britsafe.org and we can assist you with that. 
we have a couple of other questions as well, actually. Um, another question from Sally, and Sally asks, have we got any conferences planned for 2022? So I think I'd like to hand that one to Joe for now. Uh, you're on mute, Joe. So sorry, I have two mute buttons and I forget the second one. Um, <laughs> Thank you for that question, Sally. Yes, we have a really exciting wellbeing conference coming up in February, and we're actually going to be covering the seven domains of wellbeing. Uh, you'll notice I said five domains recently, but it's recently been expanded to seven. So we're going to be covering all seven domains of wellbeing with some really reputable speakers, um, and lots of our partners will be there too. I also believe that we have some membership conferences coming up as well, which Ruth will be able to tell you a little bit more about. Thanks, Joe. Um, yes, that's absolutely right. So we have an annual conference in October as well. Um, we will be sharing the agenda for that and indeed the annual schedule for all of our events um, very soon. Um, I think uh, we're also involved with the range of other external events, which we'll let you know about as well, because we'll be recording all of the different uh, talks that we give at external events, which you might find interesting too. So some of those will be, we will be running face-to-face -face conferences but some of those events will also be available virtually and also after, after the conferences as well. I hope that's helpful. Um, we have a question from Paul who's asked, how do we get more involved with the British Safety Council? So I thought that might be um, a good question for Stephen to pick up. Sure, uh, thanks Paul. It, there's a number of ways um, from a, a policy point of view, I guess a campaign's point of view. Um, I mentioned our Keep Thriving campaign I don't know if you're interested in any of the sort of stuff that Joe was talking about in terms of well-being provision, being well together, training for staff and so on. But if you're an organization that cares about the well-being of your staff, wants to do more, find out more, then you're able to support Keep Thriving, our campaign in that area as well. So you can sign up on our website, fill a few simple details in um, and then get involved. And we're really keen to hear case studies we can also help share with others and best practice and so on so that's one way um likewise on time to breathe there were various things obviously that you can get involved with there in terms of your staff if you're in london particularly signing up on our app um, but but more importantly as well i guess playing an active role maybe joining one of our sector interest groups those are the sorts of things i think that can really kind of help to to get you plugged into what we're what we're doing Hope that helps thanks Stephen. That's great. Thanks very much. So just to let you all know as well, we will be launching a Get Involved campaign in the new year um, and we'll be highlighting all of those areas that Stephen has, um, has just relayed. So if there are particular areas that you're keen to get involved in, just please do get in touch and one of the members of the VS team will be able to help. I think that's all we have time for today, actually. We're just getting uh, close to uh, 11 o'clock. Um, we will be sending out the recording of this webinar. We'll also share the slides with all of the attendees as well. Um, and we'll, as part of this as well, we'll send a short survey to you. And we'd really appreciate it if you could just take the time to give us some feedback on today's webinar. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're looking forward to working with you um, next year. And please do get in touch if you have any questions at all about your membership or any of the areas that we've highlighted today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.